evidence from the virus is is very stark. It's that both within country, sadly, it's poorer people that are more vulnerable. And then across countries, it looks as if it's countries with high rates of inequality that are more vulnerable. You see that there are, you know, uh, workers in the gig economy, there are people who lose their jobs, there's restrictions on access to sickness pay. So that there are vulnerable groups who just don't have the benefit of the classic insurance function of the welfare state. So what do they do? They do things like keep on working, even if they may fear they've got the virus, just because there isn't enough other support available. I'm not sure how short term it is, but certainly education is the most powerful long-term tool that we've got and uh, sadly there still are enormous gaps in people's access to education and again the virus has made that problem worse it does look as if the people that the, the kids who've lost out most education were the ones who were already suffering from disadvantage now again there have been excellent initiatives getting laptops out to kids who couldn't whose families couldn't afford a laptop so they could properly access online education so again there have been there have been great initiatives i think the challenge over the coming years will be to work out which of the initiatives launched during the virus which have proved so effective we should stick with them and which are the ones which really were special measures and could only be afforded and delivered in in the unique circumstances of the epidemic and, and i hope that for example programs to enable kids from disadvantaged backgrounds to online learning, to access online learning, will carry on. Because that way, if we can raise levels of education, that seems to bring with it also increased and improved responsiveness to health messages. I think it's important to recognise that that pre-pandemic is not a place that we want to go back to. There were already um, massive inequalities and um, from my personal experience when I went to uni and you know when you start a course you're meant to be at the same level you know you, you have to have um, similar grade requirements but if your if your school didn't have extra opportunities um, that would better prepare you for that course um, and if you came from a, a background that wasn't so affluent I know certainly um, I come from Oldham which is by no means an affluent area if your opportunities were less than that of others you're at a different starting point so it's important that we recognize that there was already an inequality before the pandemic has sort of shone a massive light on it um, and we we do need to um, work to be better i think it's been mentioned before work to be better rather than going back to what what was well wales has this future generations framework which aims to support the public sector and uh, and other uh, sort of i don't know what sectors but deliver projects and infrastructure which are fit for the future and i i guess i wanted to ask both of you should more countries have a framework such as that which kind of integrates them with this future generations thinking Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I can't see any downside to having that. For the future, we're going to need massive infrastructure changes here in Britain, such as, you know, the, the rollout of 5G. We need to do the whole levelling up. And, uh, and I think it's very important for our country and our economy that we do that. And Summer, final word to you. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Um, in terms of like building the future that we want um, in the way that we want, I think it's is vital that we have those extras extra that extra help and that framework mm -hmm.